My network marketing journey actually started in the year 2007. But prior to that, I've been exposed to, to network marketing. I remember in 2004, while studying for my master's um, degree in the prestigious Sir John Cass Business School in the UK, I met a guy on Liverpool Street who introduced me to network marketing by giving me brochures and videos and inviting me for, for a seminar. But at that point, um, my mind was not on network marketing. It's not something really I've considered. It's not something I've actually heard of before. And so I did not take the opportunity. But fast forward 2007, when after school I returned to, to Ghana, uh, I, I remember working in the bank and one day, Mr. Prince Eric Kujo walked to me in the bank and spoke to me about this opportunity that has kind of transformed his life. And when he started talking about the the product and the opportunity. I remember I've heard it before, so I mentioned to him that I'm sure I have videos of this company in the house. So I went to home and then uh, looked through my things and lo and behold, these were the videos. So I looked at the videos again. Um, exactly what was on the video was what Mr. Prince was telling me. So I decided to give it a try in 2007 because the first food they say is not a food, but the second one most likely is. So I started my network marketing journey in 2007 as a professional banker. Then about a year later, I did a little appraisal of what I was doing. And what I found was that I was having much joy, much fun doing the network marketing business compared to what I was doing in the bank. And then also um, the income was um, growing. Um, on daily basis, on weekly basis, on monthly basis, compared to the bank where um, a whole year there was no increase in salary or anything. So in 2008, after a network marketing trip to South Africa, I decided to leave the banking job and to pursue network marketing full time. So between 2014 and then 2018, basically I've been on the fringes of, of the industry but in July 2018, um, on a Wednesday, Mr. Jonas Vigado called me that an amazing company was coming to Ghana and I should come have a look at it. Then my wife was in the US, so I went to the meeting and having listened to what Emery was offering, um, looking at the corporate structure, um, the first time a network marketing company was going to start in Africa uh, without starting the CEO and then the vice president flew down to Ghana to do the first presentation themselves and for me that was like um, a pointer that these guys are serious and I'm talking of Mr. Yap and Mr. Lau they were in that meeting themselves and the current vice president for Africa Madam Queen Komoda was there as well so I look at their commitment to what they were doing for a business that has not started and should flow this type of manpower all the way to Ghana for the first presentation was one an attraction for me. Then they went into, into the products and the compensation plan and I felt that one, without even looking at the compensation plan then, they had a product um, called Virgin, a gynecological product, which um, I had had a stint with a gynecological product in my earlier years in network marketing and looking at the extent to which that product solved problems and how far it took us financially, I knew that this was going to be big. But the other thing that made it really for me um, to come into Emery was the fact that they had already procured an office without starting the business. Between July and until they started the business, it took about three months and um, many people could testify. I was literally coming to Emery office every single day to ask them when they were going to start because I was ready to start. And then eventually on the 15th of October, we started the business. Then my, my wife was in, in the U.S. when we actually um, started the business. So two or three weeks later, I, I got her also to, to join the, the business. And so from an initial five, we began to build the business by duplicating, by training, and by um, going down to, to talk to people. And that has been our growth path for the last um, few months that we have been in this amazing, amazing business called Emery. And so to add to what my husband has already shared, um, I must say when he heard about this amazing opportunity, so he asked me to come down to Ghana 
which I did. And when I came, the first was like, look, you have to have a look at this um, products. It's, I mean, he started talking with the products. And he's like, well, you have to use it. And this is a business that we, we have to do. Of, of course, he has already started a business. So he encouraged me to use the products. Initially, I was a bit reluctant in use, especially the fact that I have to, you know, use it down there. <laughs> But after some few presentations, I was like, okay, let me just give it a try. And I did, and the result was so amazing. So that's how I said, okay, if this product can solve the issues of women, why not? Let's give it a try. So that is how I also got um, interested in it. I, ju I jumped on board, and we all went into it fully. Yeah, so yeah, it's true. That is how we started. And... Um the reason why that was important for me, for my wife to use the product because I knew I was going to champion the gynecological product above all and it's based on my past experience in the industry and what I've grown to learn about the female reproductive system and the kind of issues that are there. And so once my wife accepted it, um, that was a big plus for me because um, I don't know how I was going to go out talking to other people about this product when my wife was not using it because um, it could have a negative effect on my conscience, which is what actually one of the pillars of, of Emery, that we produce products and we put products in the market that we ourselves and our families can use. And so once that header was cleared, I mean, um, that kind of um, freed me emotionally to, to drive my business. But in starting the business, the, the, the biggest challenge I might say at the time was to raise capital to start the business because Emery came at a point where I was kind of low financially and that was the reason why my wife even had to go to the U.S. because we, we had a U.S. green card and I vowed to stay in, in Ghana. So when we're um, having our financial challenges, I thought that she should go to the U.S. and, and work and then um, take care of herself and stuff like that. And when I saw the opportunity, um, I'm one that when I want to do something, I, I want to do it. I could have gone the easiest way to ask my wife to send me money to start the business, but I didn't do that. Um, for the fact that if she sends me money, one, I may not push the business the way I should push it um, to, to succeed. So I went to a good friend of mine. I actually spoke to her about seven people and then one of them is the uh, Neil Ante Kwakupum. I'm forever grateful to him. I called him one afternoon that I needed to see him so he said he was in the office I should come. So I drove down to his office uh, in Accra and um, after exchanging pleasantries and I told him why I was here I needed about um, 2,000 cities to start, 2,000 dollars to start a business and at a point he didn't have the money, he said. But fortunately for me, he said that somebody was sending him some money to do something for me. So I should wait. And then if the, the money comes, you will see if he can give it to me. And as, um, as it will be, the, the money came and amazingly it was in an envelope, $2,000. So he handed it over to me and asked me where I was going to pay back so I told him I'll pay back in six weeks time hopefully and then um, in about five weeks later I was able to, to redeem myself of the money he advanced to me to start the business and that was very important for me because um, I've known him for since 1997 we entered the university together and I've never asked him for anything and so this was the first time and we all served on the same pastoral board in church actually so I was not going to disgrace him, I was not going to disgrace myself, I was not going to disappoint him. So that came, he kind of became like an accountability partner for me, a reason why I should succeed, a reason why I should make money fast and then pay back his, his money. So I believe that that challenge of raising money actually also became a driving force for me to, to, to start the business and to do well in the business. Then the other thing um, I would say is 
uh, challenge wise could be could be time because the nature of our our business means that um, we work well or it does well when one is able to travel uh, on weekends where people are at um, are not working to hold presentations for them but over the years um, as a pastor which means that i have to be around on most sundays i've been able to to blend that and the key to overcoming that challenge um, of not being able to do weekend presentations and, and travel around, I always tell people, it's based on um, wisdom and sacrifice. So um, I will normally travel maybe around Thursdays uh, because we have services in church on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Then Thursdays I travel, do a bit of business, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday I'll be back to be able to be in, in church on, on Sunday. So again, I've been able to circumvent um, time challenges, which most of the time comes up with people by practically um, sacrificing and balancing some of my, my, my own comfort, letting go of my comfort zone to be able to do things outside the, the comfort zone. And that has also helped me. The other challenge you always have is um, people's perception of, of network marketing and uh, what they perceive network marketing to be and then also rejection. But the truth is that um, because I've been in the industry for some, for some time, I've seen what network marketing has done for me and I've seen what it has done for many people. So for me, rejection doesn't really get to me. Um, yes, uh, till today, despite the successes that we have clocked in network marketing, we still to talk to people who kind of reject us, who kind of tell us that it will not work. But the truth is that um, you think it will not work, but it's already working for me. So I just move on from, from that. So I know the, the power of network marketing. I know what it can do. And so I am not going to allow somebody's opinion to be able to derive me from what I am doing. So that has again enabled us to, to keep driving the business and keep driving the business. And I believe that literally um, all challenges are the same. Um, in the network marketing industry and landscape. Last 24 months in the Mary, um, we have earned um, loads and loads of money. My wife, um, who is a, a two-star director currently, earns about 2% on daily um, registrations as well. And when you put that together, that is a good, a good, a good income on daily basis. And the beauty of this industry when it comes to income is that you can go out today and increase your income. You can go out tomorrow and increase your income. You can see your income grow on a daily basis. So it gives us much hope to know that what we are doing, um, we are not laboring in vain because we do it um, and we are able to leverage big time on our, our, our income. And another beauty about this industry in terms of income wise is that our income does not depend on what is happening in the city in which we live, not depending on what is happening in Ghana, neither does it depend on what is happening in um, just one or two countries, but it's basically what is happening in Imeri. We have had the opportunity to earn um, from Egypt, we have had the opportunity to earn from Malaysia, we have had the opportunity to earn from um, Brunei, we have earned from Philippines, and multiple times from Nigeria, um, whilst we are sitting at, on our bed or on the couch in our home. And so that is the beauty of, of it. And the passive income potential in this industry is so, 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 so attractive. So that um, you can work for a few years and for the rest of your life, you have the opportunity to earn on that income. This is the same like a royalty income, where somebody plays a good music and can earn on it for several years or build real estate and can continue to earn rental income. When we take time and build a solid network marketing business it can pay you and pay you for good the rest of your life we started this business with um, about two thousand dollars that's about ten thousand Ghana cities but um, by the grace of God through the support of our entire team on the African continent we have already earned two cars from this business 100 CRV and also a Lexus GS 460 for, for my wife and there are many more to, to come and also through this opportunity we, we are building um, uh, a house again currently all financed by the initial money we put in 
in Mary. So this has been an amazing journey for me and my wife will, will testify that um, having been associated with, with, um, with me on, on this journey, I know she, she, she works with a, an international NGO, she earns foreign income, but one of the, th the ways I laugh at her in the house is at the end of the day, after writing all these reports, how much do you earn from your, your report? Many times I'm just sitting around by the close of the day, I see earn good income. So what she can testify is that um, this industry has kind of given us um, financial peace. Um, no time ever since we became associated with Emery that we have had any argument over money nor um, worry over, over money. It's a blessing or a joy when your name appears in somebody's testimony. But of all the memories, all the journeys, um, all the experiences in Emery, the one that stood out for me was um, when I became an elite manager, the first elite manager in, um, in Africa, and I had to travel to the Philippines. That was a kind of um, prophetic um, trip for me because on that particular trip, um, I was the only black man on the plane from um, Dubai Emirates Airport all the way to Manila. And it was like, you, you become a spectacle. Everybody was turning to look at you. And at that point, I could become discouraged, I could become nervous, but I, I encouraged myself by bringing out scriptures. I was telling myself that when uh, men are downcast, you will be standing. When men are standing, you will be outstanding. And when men are standing, you will be the standard. And also, um, the Bible says that kings shall come to your rising. I, on that trip, I had the opportunity to have dinner with the, the, the three founders of Emery, Mr. Lau, Mr. Yap Wen Yen, and Mr. Tang Kang Fu, and also the Vice President of Emery, Madam Queen Komoda. And it was, it was just amazing with a whole lot of people. Again, on the dinner table with people from China, people from Malaysia, people from Philippines. Again, I was the only black one um, among them. And what he, he pointed out for me was that it is not where you are coming from, but it is what you are made of that distinguishes you. And I slept in a very, very fantastic uh, hotel, uh, um, Royal Crimson Hotel in Philavet, um, in Philippines. Um, a splashing, splashing hotel with AI technology. And I, I went to, I remember going to the restaurant, and this is a black boy in this uh, white color dominated uh, uh, hotel and the people who have to serve me this time are like people we regard as superior races and sometimes you can see that the person doesn't want to serve you but he has to serve you because if you are paying his bills and for me it was it was so memorable um, that trip was so 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 memorable for me and that was that was it for me that particular trip I keep looking back back to it for me I think for those who are still doubting that it's not working and those who think that is it really true, is it a scam? Because I remember the last time when we were dedicating Mr. Harvard's car, someone was still wondering, hey, are they, are they always giving cars? So is it really true? My dear friends, my dear sisters, especially my address the sisters, this is really true. Um, you can only start something before you believe that it's really true or not. But if you're outside the box and still thinking, then you're losing. So why would you start if you lose, you know that you have made the attempt. And if you come on board, I believe that your determination, focus and hard work, you'll be able to achieve it. Because in everything that you, you put your heart and your hands on it, you definitely achieve it. Come. There are still more cars to be rewarded, to be given out. Come on board. Emery is the network marketing business of the moment. Do not hesitate to make that decision or to take that decision. I'd like to use the opportunity to welcome you. Come early, stand up, and take action now. Wow, so, yeah. I think my wife has said something very awesome and she mentioned that um, when you start is the only time you believe 
and sometimes where we consider as failure is actually not failure because sometimes you win and sometimes you learn. Where I stand today or where we stand today is as a result of my experiences from my past businesses that has enabled me to run the way I'm running with Emery. And that was just to add up to something she said. But to, to my fellow Emerians, we have an amazing, amazing opportunity. And I know 2020 has been quite challenging for, for all of us. Um, we could have done more, achieved more dreams, um, award more cars, go, go on exotic vacations, but you know how it is in this year. But what I want to say is that at whatever point you are in your business, it is not the business, it is you. Because it is not where the wind is blowing that determines where you end up at. But it is the set of your sail, how you set your sail in relation to where the wind is going. So I know you are in the business already. Let's revisit our reasons for joining the business, our why. Let's revisit our dreams. Let's revisit our goals. Let's evaluate to see if we are taking the necessary daily, weekly actions that will take us to our desired goals and desired dreams and visions for this business. And let's work on it consistently, consistently. And I believe that each and every one of us will achieve our dreams. Um, I'm sharing something with my wife recently about um, this Emery business that is a legacy business. You, you are not building it for yourself, you are building it for your family. And that is one of the things that we have in this industry and in Emery. Because for instance, in my former work as a banker, if I should fall down and die, I cannot will my job or my position to my wife or my children. But we have an amazing business in Emery that is willable. And we have already have testimonies of at least two people who started the business and then um, unfortunately they have to pass on. And one of them actually is an elite executive currently and her board has, his board has attracted four executives, that is about 1,500 Ghana cities, to the wife and the children. So can you imagine if you take time to build this business, become a one-star, two-star director, three-star director, or even uh, an ambassador, which means that you could be earning five, six percent daily commissions. That could settle your, your family, that could settle you even in your old age. So please, please, irrespective of the challenges you are going through in the business, mind you about challenges. It is the same everywhere. We have the option to blame the weather, we have the option to blame the company, blame the product, blame the, 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 the compensation plan, blame the people we are working with, blame government taxes. But ladies and gentlemen, this is all the tools that we have to work with. And if we blame the tools that we have to work with, then we are not going to get anywhere. The only person we can blame if we are not doing well in this business is ourselves. We should look at ourselves in the mirror and ask the question that if I'm looking for somebody to sign up under, will I sign up under myself? And I've done that to myself several times and that has enabled me to continue to grow in this journey and develop myself in this journey. But as you do that on a daily basis, evaluate yourself Put yourself in all the corporate trainings that are available. Put yourself in all the trainings that are happening, private trainings. Learn, um, go to YouTube, look at what is happening in the network marketing business. It helps you to cast your vision and to firm your belief in what you are doing. And I believe that if you do this consistently enough, all of us will be at our desired place, and that is the top. Thank you so much, and see all of you at the top. Now, success is such a... Um, elusive word but one of the best definitions I've heard and I'll borrow is the definition given by a, a 19 girl a 19 girl said that success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal which means that if you are advancing in the goal you set or who you set out to become and you are advancing in that direction then you are a success for one as predetermined to become a teacher, if he is progressing in the field of teaching, he is a success. One wants to be a footballer, one wants to be a networker, one wants to be a doctor. So whatever you have set your mind to do, if you are progressing in that area, then you are, you are becoming successful. 
And when it comes to our industry, like I said, success is a progressive realization of a worthy ideal. In the last um, couple of years, I have not really been attracted to any profession because I have predetermined to become a network marketer and I have predetermined that I will grow in this industry, I will advance in this industry and I will achieve significance in this industry. So whatever you set your mind, your heart on to do, so long as you are making progress in that. If it's a street sweeper that you want to sweep, if you are progressing and advancing in that, then you are being successful. Be very united. Go to Diamond.